So today I want to talk a little bit about SSO, which is something that as an organization we talk a lot about, but we all have slightly different ideas about what SSO means. And with any complicated process, I think it will help if we try to get a baseline of the different parts of what we mean by SSO or single sign-on. SSO is an agreement essentially between three different entities, people, the applications that they're trying to access, and the governing body, which we call the identity provider or the IDP. Now, users or people should be able to manage certain aspects of their own identity. And there's a lot of variation in there, like in Facebook, you can do your photo and your name and things like that, and you provide a lot of that information. But at the very minimum, you should be able to change your own password, and that password should work everywhere. The identity provider, or the IDP, is the place that takes that information and holds on to it really tight and really securely, and adds additional information about your identity. Things like organizational information, where you work, additional security roles, things you get to do. And that combination of user information and IDP information is then securely passed along to a service provider. Now, a service provider is an application generally, some sort of a web app. But, you know, think about in the Internet of Things universe, we use our, our single sign-on credentials with Active Directory to get into the wireless, for example, at NWA. You may want to access a device of some sort so a service provider shouldn't be limited just to the concept of either a web application or even an API or anything like that. Now, I think one of the places we get tripped up a lot of times when we're talking about SSO is we get confused with the concept of single sign-on and the different kinds of protocols we can use to create a single sign-on experience. The three main ways that we log into systems today are basic authorization, which is a basic username and password, and it's what we've been doing forever since the beginning of the, of the internet. Um, OAuth, which is really structured around API security, not necessarily web applications and their relationship. And then SAML, which is structured around specifically web applications and allowing us to interact with third-party applications that we may not even trust in any other way. Yeah, I know that that sounds a little confusing, so let's go through a few quick scenarios on how these different protocols may work. It always starts with the user saying to a web application, hey, I want in, I want to see what you have. And that web application in a basic authorization situation will simply throw up a username and password. That combination of the username and password is then passed back to the web app. In a basic auth situation or a forms-based login, anytime we're just using username and password, this is all the user knows about the web application. There's just this page I go to, I enter my creds, I'm done. And I may have to do this over and over again on different applications because the application doesn't talk to anybody else. Now, I include this in SSO because there is the possibility that that web application is verifying that username and password against the IDP and that the IDP trusts this application and says, yeah, I know this guy, that's his, that's his creds, here's everything you need to know about him, and maybe even a bunch of stuff you don't need to know about him, because you're cool. So we generally don't want to use this model because it, it's pretty open security-wise, it means you have to enter your username and password over and over again, even if you do have a shared store in the back end to verify that username and password. So in the API world, we've developed something called OAuth. In an OAuth flow, again, there's a web application that sits in front of this, only the web application sends back to that user, you gotta go talk to somebody else to get me a key so that we can get in and look at your data. The web app hands its own identification to the user who takes that and says, hey, this web app told me to come talk to you the IDP will then request a username and password, which of course the user provides because they trust this IDP. They know this identity provider. It's the same place they log in all the time. They know the screens, they know the terms of service, they, they know this is their account. And then if they successfully log in, the identity provider sends back a token. 
It's a key. This key is a combination of the web application's credentials, which is just an identifier, and the username and password provided by this person. So this person gives that key back to the web application, which is then going to go access the API. The API is just a data source. The web application will make it all pretty. The API has all the data. And this key only lets you see things for this person. The web application is limited to what the credentials are. And every single time that web application makes a call to that API, the API will verify that key against the IDP, against the key store, and see if it's still valid. And it should get scopes back with that that say, this is what you get to see. OK, you only get to see your user information. You're not going to see that user's information because that's not you. So now let's take a look at a SAML flow. In a typical SAML flow, again, I go and I try to log into a web page. And the web page will say, go see this IDP. Now keep in mind, this can be completely transparent to the user. And it, it, and it usually is. It can just bounce them right over to the identity provider. The identity provider needs to now verify that it knows this web application. And it can do that with a slightly more complicated thing. It's not just a key. In this case, it's a, an encrypted certificate that gets sent through. And it may want to check that certificate actually live, reaching out to that web application to say, hey, I got this encrypted key. Is this you? But it can also take a look at its own local cache. But suffice to say, this is a more complicated, secure thing. Comes back OK. The IDP may say, I don't know you, Mr. User. But say Mr. User has already logged in once. We can skip this step. It's like, I've already got your creds. I, I, I know you. Um, so I'm just going to give you this package. This package is sealed, by the way. You can't look inside of this package. But I want you to take this package, and I want you to go give it to that web application. And then the web application has a key, that signature, that encrypted key that I was talking about, that lets it open up that package and get information about that user. It is now up to the web application to decide what to do with this user. We've given it roles. We're mapping roles to certain security things in SAML. And in a perfect flow, we're going to do a combination of SAML and OAuth, where the data that this web application is connecting to is extremely restricted and we have control. But the additional information that that third party web application like Jive or Docebo needs to have, they have it. We don't have to give them anything else. They can just apply the security rules as we've dictated. So this all centers around the identity provider. This all centers around what is an IDP. And you know we can talk about things like Active Directory and LDAP and all of these really technical things. But really, an identity provider is a combination of three things. It's user information. Who are you? What do you personally get to tell us about you? It's organizational information. What groups do you belong to? Do you belong to a school district? Do you belong to some other entity? Do you belong to both? And then the IDP also needs to know about the applications who are trying to access this information. So either the signatures that I was talking about in a SAML flow or the client ID and secrets that we keep in, in a um, OAuth flow or even some sort of other database structure that is being used in the basic auth flow. Now, I don't know if this made things clearer or muddier, but yeah, I, I would like to continue the conversation. So please reach out to me and uh, any questions, comments, etc. let me know. Thanks.